Oh yeah, citizens of the world, this is Thiago from Real Life English, where our mission is to guide you beyond the classroom to live your English in real life. To help you speak confident, natural English, connect to the world, and to actually use your English as the doorway to your greatest life. I'm joining the Global Studio today by the one and only Kase. Hello, Kase. <laughs> hey, Tiago. Good to be here again. Hey, guys. Likewise, right? <laughs> Great to talk to you again, to have you here on the podcast. How have mm -hmm. you been? All good. Yeah, all good. I can't complain. It's all good. So today we're going to be talking about how to speak so that people actually want to listen to you. And you will learn how to use one of the most powerful tools you have. Drum rolls, your voice. <laughs> But before you get started, make sure you hit the subscribe button and bell down below because every week there's a new podcast episode where we dissect English tips, tricks, and to help you go from feeling like a lost, insecure English learner to becoming a confident, natural English speaker. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single new episode. Cassie, I want to start today by sharing a, a story. Again, uh, I've been sharing many stories lately on the podcast, I feel, you know. <laughs> But uh, it's uh, about my son again. And um, there was this time once he had to read a, a paragraph of a, of a course book out loud in front of the classroom. So he was supposed to get up there in front of everybody, you know, in the classroom and read that segment out loud. And then I was helping him practice and getting ready. Yeah, get ready for that. And then uh, as we were rehearsing at home, I noticed that he would grab his book with the two hands down like this, and uh, he was actually looking down. He was reading it like that, like looking down. That was awful. <laughs> that was terrible, you know? So I went on to explain to him the importance of projecting your voice and actually not looking down like that, but being erect so that you actually have the capacity or the capability to project your voice. So I taught him to maybe, um, I, I told him to uh, hold the book with one hand right here and uh, so that he has the other hand free for gestures, if he wants to gesture, and then looking kind of like that so he actually has the position to speak a little bit louder and project his voice. And uh, he did that, you know, he thought it was uh, kind of weird at first, but then I was very insistent on it. And he did it. And then he told me later that you went fine uh, at school. But uh, this is an example of the importance of knowing how to work with your voice. Yeah, when you have to present something in public or speak to people in public. I think it's, uh, it's amazing. I think the difference it makes when you're actually... Because it's more than just your voice that you're using when you're speaking. You're using your body. And like the, the advice that you've given... Um, to your son, like stand, stand up straight, make sure that your voice is able to reach people and not the, your shoes or your feet. Um, so I think these are very interesting points. Yeah. And fun. people sometimes think that public speaking only happens in uh, large theaters, right, Cassie? Exactly. Every type of interaction that we have, whether we are, you know, having conversations with our team members, like we are, uh, like we have meetings or we are speaking to each other right now, this is technically public speaking and it can happen on many different levels. Like it could be uh, a team meeting where it's five people. It could be, you know, the entire um, company meeting where you're actually presenting something to to everyone um, in the company, or it could just be a conversation at, I don't know, with friends where you're talking to a group of friends. It's 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 more than just like presentations and um, yeah, large groups of people in a theater. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah, on a stage, for example, this is important to remember. Um, I want to mention something curious I've learned about Warren Buffett, actually. For those of you who don't know, Warren Buffett is perhaps one of the most famous and influential American investors of all time. He has made billions investing in the stock market. And in one of his interviews, he attributes his success to his ability of public speaking. One of the things you would want to be sure to do uh, is whether you like it or not, get very 
comfortable, it may take a while, with public speaking, for example. So he said that when he was younger, in his younger years, he actually took this public speaking course, and that really helped him in his career. I thought it was interesting that he didn't mention his knowledge of the stocks or his knowledge of economy or the market. He mentioned his ability of, public, of being a public speaker. And it's curious because in his office, he doesn't have his college uh, diploma hanging on the wall. He doesn't have that. He has the certificate of the public speaking course he took in his younger years. So to illustrate how important learning this skill of public speaking was for him and his career. It gets me thinking about the fact that like, in order to be successful, you need to be able to communicate. You can have a wealth of knowledge inside of your head, but you need to be able com to communicate that to other people. And you need to be able to convince them that what you are saying is important and worth their time as well. So it's very interesting. And of course, with that comes confidence. Like when you're confident in what you're saying, I think it just it, it makes a, a huge difference because you're going to deliver the message a lot differently, a lot more, I don't know, robust. And, um, you know, I guess I could say with a lot more uh, belief in yourself, you are able to convince other people. And I think what we all want is, you know, when we're sitting in a business meeting, when we're talking to our friends, when we're sharing ideas with our, you know, online community, whatever, whatever platform you're using to speak, I think we all want to be heard. We all want people to give our ideas a chance. We want people to listen to what we have to say because we think what we have to say is important or else we wouldn't want to share it with other people. So I think this is so important. That's something we all want. And I think sometimes it can feel overwhelming. Like, why are people not listening to me? Or, oh, my boss is not even paying attention. I'm, I'm telling him something. He looks like he's not interested. You know, what are the reasons for this? And uh, it can seem really like, you know, we don't have any control over it. But actually, there is something you can control. Your voice and the way that you're communicating, the way that you're using your voice to communicate the message, right? I love the emphasis they're giving that your voice and the way you're communicating, <laughs> right? That's very good. I just want to ask you before we get started with that, um, mm -hmm. you said overwhelming. What, is, what does it mean when something is overwhelming? So when something is overwhelming, it feels sort of heavy, like too much to deal with, too much to bear. So mm. it's an emotion that can, you know, be on either extreme. Like it's, I'm overwhelmed with joy. Like it's so, I'm so joyful in this moment or I'm so stressed. I'm overwhelmed with all the pressure at work or something like that. So you can use it in mm -hmm. different contexts. In this context, we are using it more than in, in a negative way. Yes. Like, you know, uh, getting people to pay attention to you can feel overwhelming or speaking in public can feel overwhelming. But like I said, there's something you can do with your voice. So today we're going to be presenting here some things for you guys to pay attention to when it comes to your voice, for you to be aware of the things that you can do with your voice if you train it. Yeah, all of these are possible to acquire with training, with time and dedication. So you can do that. You can develop that. So the first point about the voice that we want to bring up here is register. Register is basically your vocal placement, where you place your voice when you speak. So for example, right now I'm speaking at a little bit of a higher register. Can you hear it? It's a little bit higher. It's a higher register and it sounds a certain way. Maybe if I talk like that, that might not come across as so confident. I don't know, but personally, I don't like that sound so much. But then you can bring it down a little bit. And uh, now it's more of a middle position there, um, as you guys can hear. And I feel like personally, that's why I talk most of the time, kind of this middle position there where my voice is. But if you want to sound more impactful or even pass more authority, you could lower your voice down a little bit more, even more like I'm doing right now, bringing it down to the chest. That gives your voice uh, a deep feeling a deep resonance, and it makes you sound fuller. As a matter of fact, research says that we vote or we tend to vote for politicians with lower voices because we associate depth with power and authority. And don't think this only applies to men. This also applies to women. Women can also speak a little bit 
lower in terms of register to convey that power or authority in their communication. That is incredible, actually. It reminds me of a story um, that I'd, I'd like to share. When I was an intern at my first broadcast job, it was a local TV station here in Cape Town, and I was doing my very first voiceover. Now, at the time, I was like, I don't know, 20 or 21, I don't know. But I had this really like squeaky girl voice, like it was kind of all in the throat, like, yeah, like I always used to speak like this, like everything was here. Um, uh, and um, I had to read a really serious news story. And um, the voiceover said something like, um, it was about the election and I was saying something really um, important. And I kept speaking like this and it, everything sounded like a joke. Um, and I, I got some some feedback actually from a radio broadcaster who told me he thinks I just need to bring my voice down a little bit. And it was really, of course, we we speak from, he tells me, <laughs> in radio we speak from the, the chest. The voice is from here. Um, and I remember from singing lessons from choir days, we used to sing, you know, get the advice to sing from your belly, like your abdomen. So I thought, okay, let me try this. And the more I did it, the more I realized that my voice was actually a lot richer, as the word you mentioned. It was richer. It was like... It sounded, it didn't sound like this anymore. Now I was speaking from here and I could actually hear the words clearer. I found that this just became the way that I speak now because I realized that I want to sound clearer and I want people to be able to be drawn in when I'm speaking. So this really is a tip that I think everyone should consider. <laughs> Bringing your voice down, it's not, it has nothing to do with sounding like a creepy man or sounding no. like a, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to sound like a, a, a man. Uh, I just, yeah. <laughs> I just want you to be able to hear me a lot. Uh, take me, it's not just about being taken seriously. I think women can be taken seriously no matter what. Naturally, some people just naturally have a higher register. Um, but it's, it, it does help when we're able to practice bringing bringing it down a little bit more. Great. And uh, is there anything else about the voice to share today, Cassie? Yes. Uh, I'd like to talk about uh, timbre. So this is mm. actually an important one here. So this is basically how your voice feels. It connects with what we spoke about with, you know, the richness, the smoothness and warmth of a person's voice. And we can think about many um People who do, you know, if you listen to audiobooks or if you listen to podcasts, you really do want to be able to hear that. I don't know, you feel like the voice is sort of a blanket that <laughs> wraps around you. It's, it's, it's amazing, the, the power of the voice. And when you think about the timbre, it is that. It's the way it makes you feel. And um, the voice sounds as if it's almost tangible. You can almost feel it, literally. Um, and I think something that I want to share on this topic, though, it, it's something that you mentioned earlier, and I just, I, I just have to share it very briefly. It reminds me of like this really funny um, stand-up comedy bit that Trevor Noah did like a long time ago. And he talks about when uh, former President Barack Obama uh, met Nelson Mandela and the two of them meet. And at the time, uh, Obama had this voice that was like this, yo, man, <laughs> like it was really high <laughs> and really squeaky and so unsophisticated. And he's asking Nelson Mandela for like advice on like how he uh -huh. can become president. And Nelson Mandela tells him, first of all, first things first, fix your voice. And he teaches him <laughs> how to bring his voice down until he sounds like the way he uh -huh. does. And now, you know, obviously it's a joke, but I think it touches on like a really important point here, which is that the leaders, as you mentioned, politicians and leaders, people who we want to listen to tend to have voices that are warm and smooth and usually of a lower register. So I think we need to think about that. And you can practice it. It's If you don't naturally have a voice like that, it's practicable, as Chiago mentioned earlier. So That's very true. Yeah. So there are breathing exercises you can do. Uh, you can learn about posture. So, you know, it is trainable. Yeah, it's totally possible to, to acquire this. Another point here is stress and intonation. This is basically how your voice rises and falls when you speak. You see, just like I did right now, rises and falls. 
rises and falls. No, 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 no. You see? So the idea here is you don't want to sound monotone. You don't want to speak like this all the time, you know, like it's just one tone all the time. This is kind of boring and nobody wants to listen to you like this for two hours. You know, like monotone. So you want to very... You know, when you raise your voice, when you lower it, yeah, so this is about stress and intonation. The technical term for this would be prosody, but uh, just think about it as your intonation and your stress, all right? Mm. What else do we have, Cassie? Next, we have pace. Now, this is how slow or fast you speak, and I, I definitely fall into the trap of being someone who, let me put it like this. I feel like when mm. we speak, you know, the phrase to wear your heart on your sleeve. Now, this means to take or to make your emotions obvious to the world or to make your emotions obvious mm -hmm. to people around you. And I think your voice does that as well. I mean, for some people, that's what I'm saying. Many people, not all people, but I think I'm one of them. And so when I'm really excited, I tend to speak really quickly and I tell people stories or I share my ideas like this. And the reality is that people cannot take in everything you're saying. They're not inside of your head. They cannot always keep up with what you're saying or they lose focus or they lose track of what you're trying to say. And this is obviously not what we want. So we want to be able to be aware of when to slow down and when to speed up. I mean, obviously, again, you don't always want to be telling a story at this pace. I mean, it, it does sound nice sometimes, but not all the time. So I would say that... Um, Along with this, like when I get really excited or when I want to share or when I'm even nervous, think of the emotion of being nervous, we tend to use more filler words. So we're going, um, uh, you know, if you're not, if you're unprepared, you might also be saying, um, and uh, if you're, if you're not sure what you're saying. And, you know, this is obviously something we want to avoid. So you want to slow down and speak clearly and draw people in with appropriate pauses. So for example, you might say, make a statement and let it, let it breathe. Let the let people think about what you're saying first before you continue speaking. Not for a long time, of course. You don't want to, uh, you know, pause for a long time. But let people absorb what you've just said, and it also adds emphasis and allows you to gather your own thoughts. So think about the pace as well. So another point about the voice has to do with pitch. Now the pitch is basically the way you deliver your lines in order to convey emotion. Because, you know, you have a phrase and you can deliver that phrase in many ways. For example, let's pick the question, where did you go? Where did you go? I could go, where did you go? Where did you go? Or I could go, where did you go? Where did you go? So the pitch is more related to that, like how you convey the line. So depending on what you want to emphasize in your presentation, for example, you can play with that part of her voice. Pretty cool, yeah? Yeah, it is cool. I think it connects very interestingly with the next point, which is volume. And this is, of course, the loudness or quietness of the way that you speak. So, of course, we don't want to be broadcasting all the time. We're not, we don't want to invade people's ears with our voices so we want to sort of draw them in and I think lowering the volume sometimes not obviously not they don't have to stretch their ears or you know really like strain sorry their ears to be able to hear what you're saying but speaking at a at a relatively lower volume can also be quite good at times depending on what you're trying to convey and I think this connects with the pitch as well so yeah, I think volume plays an important role for that reason. You know, you want to sort of emphasize certain things. You might want to increase the volume. You want to you want to basically play around with with what with the message that you're trying to convey. Um, I mean, think about like if you're on a date, you don't want to be shouting at the person all the time. You might want to whisper a little bit and you know speak a little slower and you know yeah. use a use a lower volume so that they you know, lean in a little bit to listen and hear what you're saying. So these are things that depending on what you're trying to communicate, the situation you're communicating in, all of these factors, all of these points that we've made, you know, they, they connect, right? So it all comes down to using your voice mm -hmm. with intention, exactly. right, Cassie? Using your voice with intention according to the situation you're in. So... We have covered today, I believe, six main points of the voice that you can pay attention to. So just to recap, register, timber, 
uh, stress and intonation, pace, pitch, and volume. Aside from working on those, and you can work on those by yourself, you can get a vocal coach um, if you feel like you need one. But aside from working on those, you can also do vocal warm-ups, which are very useful exercises you can do before maybe making a presentation or presenting something in public. Uh, nowadays, it's very easy for you to find online vocal warm-up exercises. You can go to Google, to YouTube, and uh, you can actually search for vocal warm-ups. And uh, you can find a five-minute video there, a 10-minute video coaching you through those exercises. Mm -hmm. Just to give an example, we have the lip trill, which is something that goes like... <laughs> You know, that is one example of a vocal warm-up exercise. But uh, we're also going to be, I'm going to be linking in the description of this video and also in the show notes, another video that uh, has some of these exercises so you guys can watch it and uh, learn how to do them as well. All right. Now, Cassie, I think now is the perfect moment for us to go mm. to a shout out section mm. here. And uh, we have a shout out from one of our app users. All right. So this shout out goes to Sonu, who says, I recently got a 7.5 band on the IELTS speaking exam. So I'm very thankful for this app. I highly recommend this application to those people who are struggling to speak English. Wow. Awesome. Thanks, Sonu. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sonu, for... The wonderful review. And your listener, if you're listening to this podcast, not on the Real Life English app, but someplace else, we highly recommend you download it because with the app, you can listen to this week's episode with a full interactive transcript, meaning that you can actually read along the words that we are using right now in this podcast episode. Also, you can connect with people around the world to have a short conversation that can go from four minutes or up to eight minutes all for free on the app. So make sure you download the app. You can go to Google Play Store or Apple App Store, search for Real Life English and download it from there. The link will also be available in the show notes or in the description box here on YouTube. So download it now and do it like Sonu. Oh, also congratulations to Sonu. Like that's amazing. 7.5 band is, band 7.5 is <laughs> incredible. So Kasi, today uh, I brought this really nice clip from Steve Jobs, actually. And Steve Jobs was known for being a great communicator. And in this clip, it, I think it is from 2007, he's actually introducing the iPhone for the very first time. So Ice-T is in the studio with us and he's gonna roll the clip for us to see. Let's watch it. Well, what we're gonna do is get rid of all these buttons and just make a giant screen. A giant screen. Now, how are we going to communicate this? We don't want to carry around a mouse, right? So what are we going to do? Oh, a stylus, right? We're going to use a stylus. No. No. Who wants a stylus? You have to get them and put them away and you lose them. Yuck. Nobody wants a stylus. So let's not use a stylus. We're going to use the best pointing device in the world. We're going to use a pointing device that we're all born with. We're born with 10 of them. We're going to use our fingers. We're going to touch this with our fingers. And we have invented a new technology called multi-touch, which is phenomenal. It works like magic. That was awesome. I, All right, really cool, yeah? I love the way that he, <laughs> he presented that. Like, it, it doesn't only make me... I mean, this is old, yeah. so obviously I, I know what's coming. But, and I mean... I don't know. It's just still so engaging. I, I'm still, I, I want to watch more. I, you know, that's how I feel watching that segment. But it's, it's, it's an amazing delivery. First of all, the very first phrase there, what we're going to do is get rid of all these buttons. Well, what we're going to do is get rid of all these buttons. First of all, it's important to point out how he pronounces the word buttons. You see, he says button. Buttons. Not button. All right. So there is a, a bit of a glottal sound there. Button, button. All right. That's how he says it. Button. And the sentence goes, what? We're. So the T for what here, he doesn't pronounce. So he drops that. So he says, what? What? Like a stop consonant. What we're, go what we're going to do becomes what we're going to do. What we're going to do. And then he goes, get rid. 
get rid, the T for get disappears, it's kind of a stop T again, get rid of all, get rid of all. So the D for rid connects with the vowel O for the preposition of, and it has that flap sound, da 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 da. So we go rid of, rid of. And then the F is pronounced as a V, which then joins with the O, the vowel A there, so of all, of all. So we say, get rid of all, get rid of all. What we're going to do is get rid of all these buttons. Well, what we're going to do is get rid of all these buttons. Uh, can I say, he talks about a stylus. Mm -hmm. Like, who wants a stylus? Nobody wants a <laughs> stylus. What is that? A stylus. The stylus is the pen that is used on, well, it's no longer used as often as it was, but it's the pen that was used to sort of write or t type out messages on the the blackberry basically was what he was using in the in the clip so it's the pen that's used to do that yeah and uh, we have some more connected speech here to break down mm -hmm. could you uh break down the next part here about sure. get them yeah so we're gonna see something similar quite later on when he mentions 10 of them as well it's quite it's all basically using the same uh type of connected speech so in all of Every time he says them in this clip, you'll notice that the TH sound is basically silent. He reduces it to um. You have to get them and put them away and you lose them. So we will see that with get them and put them, the T at the end of get and the T at the end of put is pronounced as a flap T sound. So it sounds like a duh sound. Get them, put them, put them away. And then when he says lose them, you know, that one sort of the lose stays the same, but we, it sort of connects lose them. It sounds like one word, right? And what I, what I found interesting was the way he goes yuck. This is an expression you can use in English to express disgust. Yuck. But you see, he's selling the, the iPhone. He's selling the idea of the iPhone. And the way he uses his voice here, he sounds very enthusiastic, right? He goes, who wants a stylus? It's like, it's absurd. You see the voice. Eh? <laughs> Who wants a stylus? You have to get them, put them away, and you lose them. You see? Yeah. Yuck. <laughs> right? Yeah. So you see how he uses the voice. Yeah. It modulates a lot. Mm. It rises and falls. No, 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 You know? So yeah, <laughs> this is a, a good example, actually, of a person who is using the voice well mm -hmm. in a public speaking context. Now, still breaking down connected speech here. Uh, we have the best pointing device. The best pointing device in the world. So the T for best here disappears. We say the best pointing, the best pointing. But he does something else there. The word pointing has this combination of N and T. Usually when you have that combination of N and T, especially in American English, the T tends to be dropped. So we, don't pronounce, we only pronounce the N. So instead of saying pointing, we hear Pointing, pointing with the end there. So the best pointing, the best pointing device, he says. And the same thing happens a little bit later in the clip with the word invented. And we have invented. You see again, invented, we have the N and T combination. The T goes away, so I pronounce only the N. Invented, invented. And we have invented. I think the purpose here is to get people excited. So I think when you're communicating and you're thinking about the purpose of why you're saying what you're saying, you want to make people feel there's, a, you, there's an emotion you want them to feel or there's an action you expect them, a reaction you might want from them. So you need to bring that out. You know, imagine you're telling, you're trying to sell something to someone and you're like, yeah, it's magic. Um, yeah, put him away. I mean, if you're... <laughs> You're, you don't seem excited about it, so why would they get excited about it? And he sort of brings that out. He seems like he's convinced that this is going to change the world. This is amazing. No one's ever seen anything like it. And I, I get that from him. That's the energy he brings across. And, you know, look at his hands when he talks about he's using his hands. He's using his, his full body to, to sell you this idea. Mm -hmm. That is a great point, yeah, because we are talking all about the voice today, but communication uh, Effective communication goes beyond the voice. It's also about the body language. Awesome. So now it's time for the big challenge of the day. And the big challenge is what scares you the most about speaking in public? 
And what have you been doing to overcome this challenge? Leave us a comment on YouTube if you are watching us on YouTube or send us an email at hello at reallifeglobal.com. We are looking forward to hearing from you. And finally, Cassie, we have here some YouTube comments from that episode that you and I did together mm. about raising bilingual kids. And yeah. uh, in that episode, we asked the question, what is the best age to start learning a new language? Mm. Could you please read the two comments we have here? Sure. So American English says, I think that the best age to start learning a new language is when the child starts to speak the first language easily and confidently and starts to understand what the languages are. Hmm. So I guess this in this case, uh, it's about comprehension first, like comprehending the first, having, you know, a full understanding of, you know, the fact that mm -hmm. they're learning the language. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense. It's a good, I agree with that. And the second comment is from a viewer who says, I think that the best age for learning a second language is from the beginning of the school period, when the child is already learning to find out and use new information. There's rivalry among classmates, and I think that this is the best time to learn a language. If one of the parents knows the necessary second language, then it's possible from an earlier age. Thank you for the video. Oh, thank you so much for your comment. Thank you guys for leaving us a comment. We really appreciate that. It's so interesting to read them. And just to recap, today we talked all about using your voice when engaging in public speaking of any sort, at any scale. But like we have already uh, said, there is much more about public speaking than the voice. And having said that, we have done some lessons here on the channel where we cover different aspects of communication and public speaking, such as body language, feeling more confident when you speak. So I'm going to leave the link to these lessons in the description here of the video below in case you want to go ahead and learn some more about effective communication. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening to us today, to this podcast, and stay tuned for next week's podcast, which is going to be full of rich information <laughs> as well. One, two, three... Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Today we are talking about the importance of writing. Uh, writing is one of those skills that learners might not pay as much attention to as mm -hmm. speaking, for example, but writing can be very useful even for your communication skills. So we're going to be discussing about that today. You know, one of the things I love about writing, Ethan, is that writing helps you organize your thinking. Because we have many ideas, many thoughts, and sometimes, you know, in order to craft those ideas, writing can actually be beneficial in that case. Like, what do you...